How are we getting on, folks? Um, look at I suppose quick run through today. Entry poor, Wexford not bad, and a very very good day in Galway. Uh, putting it mildly, I think we had seven winners, three non runners. I think, and um, two <laughs> two fallers in Galway. But uh, overall, I'm look I'm fairly happy with the way things turned out there today. Uh, some very very good performances, and I definitely think a few, in particular leading in Galway, have shown exactly, I suppose, where they're going to be in time to come. I think there's definitely going to be a few superstars after coming out of Galway. Um, I suppose look at Wexford and Galway is hard. I suppose to pick between the two. Uh, obviously I normally do tip up for the national hunt, but Wexford isn't known to be one of my better cards for tipping up horses while Galway being a, my local track I can't let it go without tipping it up so we're going to I suppose try and fly through both of them real quickly enough in terms of value there's no real value in my opinion around Wexford there's there's maybe one or two races that exceed 10 to 1 odds but like there's an awful lot of short price horses in here that definitely look like they're going to absolutely hose up in my opinion uh, but we may as well I suppose kick things on in the first race then the 12.55 it's a fairly decent I suppose contest and it looks to be a very good battle between the top two in the market um, obviously one of Martin Brazel's I think um, same colours as Longhouse Poet the name just evades me now at the minute but we're actually going to go against him here now with Simon Muneer's horse, Hamdun Swar. Uh, currently trading around 7-4. to four. In my personal opinion, this horse is going to be better suited more so than being a better horse in my personal opinion. He was very, very impressive. He was actually lightning quick in Goran Park in similar conditions. It was absolutely atrocious that day. Uh, more than likely, you're going to see very heavy ground tomorrow. It was... I think JJ Slevin said it there today that it was riding very soft. Uh, that along with, like that was the first race of the day when he said it. Uh, so you can add that, I suppose, ground conditions with seven races thrown on top of it. As well as that, you have the likes, <laughs> you have the likes of more rain after falling uh, since then. So yeah, you're going to be looking at heavy, sloggy ground tomorrow and... The more rain that falls, the better for Humdun Swire in this one. I personally think 7-4, to four, you're getting much better value than even money. Um, I think the favourite here, the ground, is definitely going to be a concern tomorrow. But uh, overall, it definitely looks to be, I suppose, a very, very good contest. And should be a great, I suppose, opening race for a very, very good card, in my opinion. Uh, second race of the day, then, one thirty. Um, we are going to go with an each way shout here now with Scaler at 12 to 1. Uh, coming from the Elizabeth Doyle team, they seem to be in fairly good form. Scaler tends to run much, much better in, I suppose, stickier, heavy ground. So that's where I'm sort of coming from here with the 12 to 1 shot. I definitely think there's a few in these that will prefer, I suppose... Look at the put in layman's terms, there's their summer jump horses at the end of the day. There's an awful lot of these that would be suited to better ground. Um I definitely think twelve to one. You're looking, say, for a horse that's coming from the yard that's I suppose in in decent form. He is fit, there's no doubt about it. He's put in some very, very good runs in the feet. Obviously Kilbegan winner earlier on, I suppose, at the start of the year or start of the season. Um as well as that, he put in some very, very good runs in the feet. Uh, I definitely think, look at the value is there at the end of the day. 12 to 1 is, is definitely well worth an each way shout. I think there's over seven runners here, so you should be getting more than three places. So, in my opinion, I definitely think it's well worth getting on board each way. I definitely think it's going to put in a very, very good... Uh, I suppose a bit of a bold effort more so than uh, a good showing here and it should at least run on in for second or third but I think he'd be hard up now to go and actually win the race tomorrow. Uh, 
205 then we're going to go with Mick Winter's horse here now we're going to go with she's flat to the mat at 7 to 2 uh, this one here uh, course winner uh, won over this sort of trip loves the ground the softer the better for she fl she's flat to the mat um, obviously Mick Winter's his horses are starting to get back in form uh, he was hitting I suppose a bit of a dry spell there up until recently enough before um Chatham Street lad came up and absolutely hosed in in um, Ballon Robe before running a pretty decent enough race in Galway uh, a couple of days ago. Um, it doesn't look to be too hard of a race for it to go and win. It, it's definitely beaten the similar enough sorts here before. Um, yeah, I think 7-2 is a little overpriced for, in my opinion. I know I was... I remember I was on it there one time. I think it was actually in Wexford the time I was on it. I think he 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 traded in around or she traded around, um, eleven to one, twelve to one. Could have even been bigger than that. I'm not hundred percent sure, but yeah, I definitely think seven to two. It's decent enough value at the end of the day. Like you're you're coming. I suppose looking here at three and. I suppose a, a half or three and three quarter of the odds. Um, yeah, I definitely think you you could do plenty worse at uh, shorter prices here at seven to two now tomorrow for she's flat to the mat. Uh, next race then 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 the um two forty we're going to go with Kilgory at five to two. For me, this one here looks to be the better option of the two. Obviously, the favorite here does boost an awful lot of I suppose hope and expectation really at the end of the day but ground is definitely a concern it's never been tested on I suppose anything softer than soft really at the end of the day uh, whereas this one has ran fairly credibly I suppose to mark a winner around I think it was 106 um, if I'm not mistaken if it produces something like that and perhaps this favourite uh, doesn't take to the ground as as much as I suppose people might think. I definitely think five to two should be enough, uh, and should be definitely better value here. Really, at the end of the day, to see this horse go on and uh, do the business now tomorrow. Now the next two races, uh, it's definitely between the nap and the next best. But instead of doing them singly, I would definitely throw them into a double here. Now I definitely think it's it looks as safe as houses obviously i could be cursing myself and putting the mockers on myself already but yeah i can't see manella indoor or andy dufresne being beaten here today obviously <sighs> wexford it it sort of throws a spanner in the works at the best of times but yeah when you look at the two the, the two horses farms matched up with the what they're facing i suppose coming into tomorrow you, you can't look past them. If you're looking for winners, you just simply can't look past them. Uh, obviously, look, at you could try and make a case for forecasts and try cast, but to be quite honest, I don't think I don't think it's worth it. I definitely think, like Wexford, you could have a horse coming in at 66 to 1, coming in second, and that would just uh, absolutely kill the mood for, I suppose, forecast bets. So if you want winners, if you want to get on a bet that's going to, I suppose, turn a bit of profit, I definitely think you could do an awful lot worse than this double here now tomorrow. Should be two fairly comfortable victories. I think Andy Dufresne, people underestimate him an awful lot. Manila Indo, a clear class above the rest. Yeah, it should be a fairly easy couple of winners here now in this race. Or in these, these two races, should I say. Finally then, we are going to go out the very same we came in. Uh, we're looking for value and value is what we're going to get here. Now we're going to go with um, Church Stone Warrior at 8-1 to one each way. This one here definitely looks to be... Look, it, it, it probably won't win, but it could run on... Uh, well, it should run on for a fairly decent place. Uh, coming from the Jonathan Sweeney yard... His last winner here, there was a gamble on for the bumper horse. Um, I think it was last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyway, 
to make a long story short, this horse has already been punted from 16 to 1 into 8. Uh, good second in a pint of pint in, on his first run. I think it ran up to a mark of 90 on debut. So when you put it all into perspective, that should definitely be enough to see this horse run on for second. I can't see it beating the favourite. Uh, with obvious reason here, the favourite looks miles above the field. But for a horse, it, I think it's trading at 10 to 11 as favourite. And I suppose has, to a certain extent, disappointed in the past. I definitely think at an each way price, 8 to 1. Bob's your uncle. If he places it, it's as good as a 2 to 1 winner at the end of the day. That's where the money is going to be valued at. And I think definitely think... If you follow those tips for Wexford, I definitely think, look at you You should be able to come come out with some sort of a profit. Moving on to Galway then, uh, this one definitely is a much better chance of, I suppose, getting value here. Uh, we're going to skip the first race, uh, let Jack Cond at 2-7, to seven, uh, really and truly, it should hose up. It's a, it's a daughter, of, or it's a... Um, it's a daughter of Frankel. Um, really and truly, she should be well able to hose up in the, these conditions. The softer, the better for her. Um, but two to seven, I, I think you'd have to be hard up now to go back in this horse now tomorrow. Um, shouldn't really lose. If it even comes second, you'd be very, very disappointed with it. Um, the 155, then, we are going to go with a local... Uh, Trained and local owned horse uh, of, I suppose, my local town of Portumna. Uh, out on Friday, trained in Burr, uh, currently trading around 10 to 1. Colin Keane on board, uh, two from two around Galway. Uh, and those two runs have come in soft ground or worse. Really and truly, I think it's drawn in stall 11. So that is a little bit of a hindrance here now tomorrow. But... Colin Keane gets on very, very well with this horse. It looks to be, I suppose, uh, treading on tin water in terms of the handicap mark. But the fact that it's two from two around Galway definitely has to speak colours. The fact that Colin Keane is two from two on his back definitely has to speak colours. And the fact that he is one on softer ground or heavier, uh, twice from two runs, Definitely have to speak colours. 10 to 1 is a crazy, crazy price. I definitely think he's well worth an each way shout, in my opinion. And in my personal opinion, I definitely think he should go very close, if not go make a tree from tree. Um, next race then, the 230, we are going to go with Vazzy at 10 to 3. Another Colin Keane horse here now for Noel Mead. It's hard to know what to make of this horse, really, at the end of the day. It's racing much... I suppose, tougher conditions and tougher, against tougher horses and been massive, massive, I suppose, prices at the end of the day. I think the last time I raced, it was 250 to 1. It's coming into way calmer waters here now, tomorrow. By the looks of things, he's bred um, to appreciate a drop of rain. Now, I know breeding doesn't say it all at the end of the day, but there is good... I suppose there is good statistics there uh, for winners to runners on the sire side of things for horses in, I suppose, when running, I suppose, in um, in ground, soft, soft to heavy, uh, heavy as well. Look, it's a chance. The favourite looks solid enough at the end of the day. The fact that Colin Keane is... In my opinion, anyway, the best uh, jockey in Ireland at the minute. It's definitely close between himself and Shamie Heffernan for me, but Colin Keane definitely takes the biscuit at the minute. Um, yeah, I, I think 10 to 3 is the best value, in my opinion. I know it's, a, it's for a horse that we don't really know much about, but yeah, I definitely think 10 to 3 definitely looks to be a small little bit of value. Um, moving on then to the 305 <sighs> nap of the day folks we are going to go with starting Monday at 11 to 2 this one here definitely looks to be more interesting than most at the end of the day the favourite in this one for Dermot Weld 
has disappointed me to the highest degree. I've been looking at this horse for the past, I suppose, couple of couple of months now at this stage, and although it has been, I suppose, running solidly enough, you'd have expected to go and I suppose see a win come from it sooner rather than later, and it's starting to tread into the later territory now at this stage. Start Monday though. Um it's been given a very, very bad dose of bad luck from the very start of his career. Between not getting uh softer ground to bad draws to bad luck in running. He's meeting him he's coming in here now tomorrow of uh, at a fairly decent, I suppose, draw. I think he's drawn in Stall one or stall two. I'm not hundred percent sure, but he's definitely drawn on the inside anyway. He's not too far off the inside, which is key around Galway especially. Definitely likes to likes the softer ground. I think the softer the better, and he's definitely going to get that tomorrow. Um, yeah, the favorite definitely looks like I suppose better ground will suit him as well. So it's sort of. Tipping the scale a little bit uh, when it comes to, I suppose, a potential winner. In my opinion, 11-2 to 2 is an insult to this starting Monday. I definitely think he has got the ability. Uh, given luck in running, he can run up to a mark of 75-ish. Um, I wouldn't, I suppose, go over it or I wouldn't go under it because we don't really know if getting a clear run what this horse is going to be like. In my opinion... 11-2 should be nailed on. Uh, I definitely think, providing he gets luck in running, providing he can, I suppose, kick on. Billy Lee is on board. Billy Lee is another brilliant, brilliant jockey on his back. Yeah, I definitely think 11-2 is a great, great price. Um, but moving on then to the 340. We're going to go with Leanne Breen's horse here now with Lottie Loveheart at 7-1 to one each way. Uh, for me personally, it looks to be, I suppose, a bit of a core specialist it, it, without being a, a specialist as such. It definitely likes Galway as a track. It definitely likes ground conditions to be weakened enough. Um, definitely, by the looks of the horse, he likes to have a bit of juice in the ground. In my opinion, 7-1 to one is a great, great price for an each-way shout. I definitely think... You're guaranteed to get a uh, look in running. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's Shane Foley on his back. I can't be 100% sure. I can't remember exactly who is on his back, but normally for the Galaxy horses, Shane Foley is on an awful lot of them. I could be totally wrong. I could be on the right track. I don't know. I don't have it written down here beside me. Um, simply because I have so many races to cover and I don't want to take up too much time either but yeah I definitely think this horse is going to do better than most here now tomorrow and 7-1 to one should be a great I suppose each way shout here now moving on to the 4.15 we are going to go with the next best of the day personally speaking Cerberus looks to be coming on coming in here on a fairly decent mark and two to one definitely looks to be a nice enough price obviously Cerberus is better known for his jumping ability um but I suppose he's definitely disappointed he disappointed me there last year I thought he was definitely going to be a potential triumph harder winner uh, at the very very start of the year talking we're talking uh going into 2019 or at the late part of 2019 uh, I thought this horse was going to be nailed on for the triumph order but <laughs> uh, strange like just strange things happen during the year he he started off so well and slowly but surely his confidence and his ability just started to knock further and further down the down the pecking order <sighs> I think he's on a fairly decent mark for a flat horse. I definitely think if he runs to the way he ran on his first start over hurdles last year, he should be able to hose up clean and dry tomorrow. I definitely think 2-1. to one. The money is down. The money definitely speaks uh, volumes here now tomorrow. Uh, I think he was 
something like four to one at the at, at when the prices came up last night or earlier on there today, and he's gone into two to one now. That for me speaks colours. This horse is going to run a fairly, fairly decent race tomorrow. In my opinion, he won't be caught. A few of these are, I suppose, exposed and vulnerable to, I suppose, a potential horse that's completely thrown in here. And Cerberus definitely looks to be the one to be on. Uh, finally then, the 4.45, we're going to go with uh, Stelafi. Uh, Stelafi, I think I'm pronouncing that that right at seven to two. Yeah, it's it's a hard, I suppose, race to call. You're looking at, I suppose, potential improvers, without, I suppose, getting caught up in the handic- handicap mark too much. In my opinion, I'm sort of going with the jockey and the trainer in this one. I'm not really and truly. I'm not going with the horse. I'm going with the jockey and the trainer. Uh, trainer obviously, Edo McGuinness, Edo. Um, definitely loves his runners around Galway and loves to have his winners around Galway anyone that goes to the Galway festival and doesn't have a few bob knocking around on an Edo McGuinness horse is, is asking for I suppose a <coughs> he's asking for a losing losing bet at the end of the day I definitely think <coughs> sorry about this now uh, I definitely think this Delafi will be well I suppose well primed for tomorrow. Um, the jockey on board is Sam Ewing, £7 claimer. My personal opinion, this lad is destined for serious, serious stardom. I definitely think he is the next the next generation superstar. That's the best way I can describe him. He's got a head on him way above his ears. He knows racing inside out, upside down. Obviously... Warren being his father, he was always, I suppose, surrounded by race horses. Well, I suppose, as are most of the young lads and young girls coming into the ranks nowadays. But this Sam Ewing definitely looks to be very, very special. Uh, he's definitely a name to be, I suppose, keeping in the back of your mind for years to come. In my opinion, he is going to be a multiple mul- or multiple champion jockey. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't, I suppose, argue the fact that he is still, I suppose, learning his trade. But as a seven pound claimer, he is like a, a or AP McKay. He is just way, way above the seven pound claim. He he is such great value for his claim. Ido likes to get a good handicapper in Galway. There's no mistake about that. 7-2 definitely looks to be the best value in the race. And I would definitely be uh, advising getting on board. <sighs> Hopefully we'll be we'll be singing and dancing by the end of Galway and by the end of Wexford tomorrow. But I'm going to leave it there. That's all I'm going to be covering tomorrow. Um, if you like the content, please make sure to hit subscribe with the bell along with it. You'll be notified anytime the video goes up. And... Um, Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much for listening. Please make sure to like, share and subscribe. And if you're going to be having a bet, the very best of luck tomorrow. Thanks very much.